Today's topic is 4.2, factoring quadratic equations. That's on pages 218 to 233 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 20.6, and we're going to expand and demonstrate understanding of factoring polynomial expressions, including those of the form. Here's three different forms. They're kind of long. I'm not going to speak them out for you. Um, where A, B, and C are rational numbers. And our lesson objectives, there's two of them. Number one, to recall factoring techniques learned in previous courses, like in grade 10, and to expand on those techniques. And number two, to use factoring to help solve quadratic equations and equations written in quadratic form. So last day we used graphing to find the solution to quadratic equations, but we found out that that ended up being pretty lengthy. And at times we needed to use technology in order to uh, solve the quadratic equation. So today we're going to review factoring methods that we've learned in previous courses, because they can also help us solve the quadratic. And once they're in factored form, we can let each of our factors equal zero and solve for our variable. So there's a number of different uh, methods we learned to factor. The first one was always to remove a greatest common factor first. So here's an example. It says uh, 0 equals 20x minus 5x squared. If I were to remove a greatest common factor, that greatest common factor is going to be 5x. And then I'm still left with uh, 4 minus x. And now I can set each of these factors equal to 0 because 5x times 4 minus x is equal to 0. This is called the zero product property. That means that um, these things one of them has to be equal to zero. So if I let 5x equal zero, that means x is just equal to zero. And my other answer is if I let 4 minus x equal zero, and I solve for x, just means I'm going to move the x over to the other side to make it positive, that means that x is equal to positive 4. So there, those are my two answers. Now this is a lot easier than the graphing. We don't have to make a table of values, we can just simply factor. The second type of uh, equation that you need to know how to factor is factoring by a difference of squares. So in this case, um, we've got 0 equaling 25x squared minus 9. You have to remember with the difference of squares, it has to be a difference first off. You can't factor a sum of squares. And both these things have to be perfect squares. And they are. And when you do that, we have two sets of brackets. We have, in the first set of brackets, we have 5x minus 3, which is just the square root of both the first term and the second term. And the second set of brackets, we have 5x plus 3. If we were to multiply these things through, we'd get 5x times 5x, which is 25x squared. we get negative 3 times positive 3, which is negative 9. And then we'd have 5x times positive 3, which is positive 15x. And 5x times negative 3, which is negative 15x. Those two things cancel each other out. And that's why a difference of squares always gets factored into these two factors. Just a square root of the first term, square root of the second term. Now we set both these things equal to zero, and soon you'll be able to do this in your head, so you don't always have to write it out. That makes uh, 5x equal to 3, and x equals 3 fifths. And likewise, if we do the same thing with 5x plus 3, we're just going to get negative 3 fifths. So we have 3 fifths and negative 3 fifths as our two x-intercepts, or our two solutions to this quadratic equation. So our third method is factoring by inspection. And we used inspection to factor a trinomial when we have um, a 1 in front of our x squared here. And factoring by inspection is just what it sounds like. We need to look at this or inspect this thing. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but add to negative 2. So we've got our two sets of brackets set up here. We've got an x in the first term for both of them. So two things that multiply to negative 15, but add to negative 2 would be negative 5 and positive 3. And when we solve this, when we let this thing equal 0, that means that x equals positive 5. And in this case, x would equal negative 3, because we'd have to move them over to the other side of the equation. So those are our two answers, positive 5 and negative 3. So inspection is, is actually pretty easy. But remember, we can only do that when there's 1 in front of our x squared. Factoring by decomposition is a process that we learn. So when there isn't a 1 in front of our x squared, um, how do we actually factor that? And we did that with a series of steps. So your first step, and you'll probably want to write these down somewhere, is that we multiply the 3 and the negative 8 together, and we get negative 24. So now we're looking to decompose this middle term, or break it up into two terms, such that when we multiply those two terms together, we get negative 24, and when we add them, we get negative 2. And that ends up being the two numbers that multiply to negative 24 but add to negative 2 would be negative 6 and positive 4. So we're going to break this up into negative 6x, plus 4x. So what we've done is we've rewritten this quadratic. We haven't actually changed it. We just wrote it differently. Because um, negative 6x plus 4x is still negative 2x. So that's your first step. Find out what multiplies to negative 24, adds to negative 2. And your second step, decompose that thing. So we'll write it as two different terms. 
Your third step is to group these two sets of terms, and you're going to uh, take out a greatest common factor from each of those uh, groups. So in the first group here, my greatest common factor is 3x, and I'm left with x minus 2. And in my second group here, my greatest common factor is going to be 4, and once again, I'm left with x minus 2. Now, you should always be left with the same second term, or second, yeah, second uh, factor here. Um, if they're not the same, then you've done something wrong. So now we're going to take out a greatest common factor, but this time our greatest common factor is going to be x minus 2 and x minus 2. When we take that out, what we have left is just these numbers that were in front. 3x plus 4 is your second a factor. Now you can double check this thing by multiplying it through. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6x. So negative 6x plus 4x is our negative 2x. And negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. So this process of decomposition works for anything that is a quadratic but has a number in front of the x squared. And when we solve these two factors, because they're both equal to 0, that means that x equals positive 2 for our first one. And again, remember when I'm solving a binomial like this, I move the 4 over, it becomes negative, and then I divide by 3, so I get negative 4 thirds. So those are my two um, solutions or x-intercepts or roots of this equation. So the first four methods we've all seen before, and now this new one is factoring polynomials that are in quadratic form. So they're going to look like quadratics that we worked with before, but not exactly like them. So what we see here is we have a 9 times x minus 2 squared minus 4 times 2x plus 3 squared. Now this looks an awful lot like something, I guess we could say, uh, like a 9a squared minus 4b squared. Now that's a lot like a uh, difference of squares. We could factor that thing. And actually what we're going to do is factor this thing like a difference of squares, because it is. It's just a little more complicated, that's all. So if I take a look at it in this form, I know that my two factors are going to be 9a or sorry, 3a minus 2b and 3a plus 2b. Well, I don't have a's and b's. I happen to have x minus 2's and 2x plus 3's. But instead of a, then, I'm going to put in an x minus 2. And so when I'm factoring this thing, now I get 3 times, we said a, but it's actually x minus 2, minus 2 times b. Well, we don't have a b, but we do have a 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with a adding sign in between here. So I have 3 times x minus 2 plus uh, 2 times 2x plus 3. So these things can get kind of complicated, so we have to remember our order of operations and working with brackets. Inside these brackets, I get 3x minus 6 minus 4x minus 6. And over here, I get 3x minus 6 plus 4x plus 6. Now I can just combine like terms. I get negative x minus 12 over here. And over here I get 7x and a 0. So here's my two factors now. And that means I set my, both my factors equal to 0 because I should have been writing in a 0 here. And so when I have negative x minus 12 equaling 0, that means that I get negative x equaling positive 12. That means that x equals negative 12. So there's one of my answers. And then my other one is when I have 7x equaling 0, that means x equals 0. So there's my two answers. So again, this thing is a little more complicated than a normal difference of squares, but we can still factor it like a difference of squares. And if you need to, just make a substitution. Call them a and b instead of x minus 2 and 2x plus 3. But you can still factor them like difference of squares. Our second example here is uh, negative 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 12 times x plus 3 plus 14. Well, that again is pretty complicated. Now, you may want to, right off the bat, square x plus 3, then multiply it by negative 2, and then take 12 and multiply that by x plus 3. But you're going to be doing a lot of work um, to just to get to another quadratic that you have to factor. And then when you're done, you might not even be able to factor that quadratic. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another substitution again. I'm going to say this is an awful lot like negative 2a squared plus 12a plus 14. So what I've done is I've said that a is the same thing as x plus 3. Since there was a common theme here, there's an x plus 3 squared and then just an x plus 3. So now I can factor this thing 
Um, our first step in factoring at all times is to take out a greatest common factor. So I'm going to take out a negative 2. And then I get a squared minus 6a minus 7. Well, now I get negative 2. Um, in the brackets, I'm looking for two things that multiply to negative 7 but add to negative 6. That's going to be a minus 7 and a plus 1. But we don't have an a, we have an x plus 3. So at this point, I'm going to substitute that x plus 3 back in there. I get x plus 3 minus 7. And I get x plus 3 plus 1. So that means my two factors, or in this case 3, because I took out a greatest common factor of negative 2, I get x minus 4, and I get x plus 4. Now this all equals 0. So I could divide both sides by negative 2. And when I do that, that gets rid of this constant of negative 2 that's out in front here. And so I really just have two factors, x minus 4 and x plus 4, which means um, my two answers are positive 4 and negative 4. And that is another way to solve a, a polynomial that looks like it's a quadratic, but looks like it's even a little more complicated than a normal quadratic. And our final example. It says a water slide ends with the slider dropping into a deep pool of water. The path of the slider after leaving the lower end of the slide can be approximated by the quadratic function h of d is equal to negative 1 sixth d squared minus 1 sixth d plus 2, where h is the height above the surface of the pool and d is the horizontal distance the slider travels from the lower end of the slide, both in feet. What is the horizontal distance the slider travels before dropping into the pool after leaving the lower end of the slide? So basically they're saying that after this person leaves the lower end of the water slide, um, it makes uh, what looks like an upside down parabola, remember, because this value here is negative. Um, so they kind of make a motion that looks like that, a little par parabolic motion. So we're looking for the horizontal distance the slider travels before dropping into the pool. Well, we have a quadratic here. We need to solve this thing. We're going to try and find the two x-intercepts. We know there's going to be x-intercepts um, because it opens downwards. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take out a greatest common factor. Now the greatest common factor we're going to take out this time is a fraction. We're going to take out negative one-sixth. And when we do that, I'm going to be left with a d squared here. I take out this negative one-sixth, I'm going to left, be left with a positive d. And if I take out a negative one-sixth from two, I'm going to be left with a negative 12. And in order to check that, I'm going to take this negative 1 6, I'm going to multiply it back into negative 12. And when I take 1 6 of 12, I get a 2. So that's always a good way for you to check your answer. So now I have negative 1 6, and that is equal to something that I can easily factor, two things that multiply to negative 12. I'm going to be using inspection because there's a 1 in front of this d squared. Two things that multiply to negative 12, but add to positive 1. That's going to be d plus 4 and d minus 3. That means I have a parabola that has, um, I don't need to rewrite all that again, um, I have two solutions to this parabola which is negative 4 and positive 3. However, if I was to look back at this sketch that I started, this parabola, if I keep on moving it to the left, it means that this one here is our negative 4 and this one here is our positive 3. Now we're talking about a real life situation where it's a, a water slide. So a person and their horizontal distance can't have a horizontal distance of negative four. So that means that from where the slide starts, or I guess where the slide ends, that's when the person gets launched into the air, um, it, it's being covered a different dif uh, distance sorry, of three feet. And so this first answer for us is really extraneous. It, it makes no... Uh, no sense with the question that we're actually talking about, but the second answer is the one that we're looking for. So the answer would then be three feet of distance traveled. So in summary, knowing how to factor makes it much easier for us to solve a quadratic equation compared to graphing. Each question that you encounter will be different, so you need to be able to factor by using all the me methods that we discussed, and those would be removing a greatest common factor. You always want to do that first. Then you want to check to see if it's going to be a difference of squares. That's easy to spot because um, there's two perfect squares and then it has to be a difference. Remember, it can't be a sum of squares. Inspection is another way to factor, and that's when the value in front of your x squared is 1, and then decomposition is when the value in front of your x squared is not 1. Uh, sometimes an equation may be in the following forms. It will be easier for you to factor them like a quadratic than to expand them. So remember that 
if it's something like the example we did when there's a x plus 3 inside these brackets, that would be like uh, 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 5 times x plus 3 plus 10 or something. Um, remember, you can still factor this thing like a quadratic, so you'd probably, you would use inspection or decomposition in this case, depending on whether this a value is 1 or not. And then the other one is when it looks like a difference of squares, but it might have a, a whole polynomial in for f of x and or g of y. Um, it just means that there could be things inside these brackets that are more than just like an x squared or a y squared. So your assignment is on pages 229 to 233. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.